Not only do we focus on breaking racial barriers, we also focus on breaking gender barriers. Did you know there were three pioneering women who competed with and against the men in the Negro Leagues? The first of this talented group, Tony Stone, was a tremendous athlete who played the infield, primarily second base. She joined the Indianapolis Clowns in the spring of 1953, and in addition to being a woman in an all-male league, had the added pressure of succeeding a pretty good young ball player, Hank Aaron. He had left the Clowns the previous year to sign with the Boston Braves, and it was Tony Stone who stepped in to fill his shoes. Now, Clowns owner Sid Pollock reportedly wanted Stone to wear a skirt or shorts while playing, but Stone refused and wore pants just like the rest of her teammates. She played 50 games that season with the Clowns and became a sensation. Attendance soared after her debut as fans had their first opportunity to watch a woman competing against the men on the diamond. After Stone was traded to the Kansas City Monarchs the next season, Clowns manager and Negro League legend Oscar Charleston replaced her with another trailblazing female ball player, Connie Morgan. Morgan debuted with the Clowns when she was just a teenager, and by that time, she was already a two-sport star back home in Philadelphia, playing basketball in addition to catching for an all-female, all-black baseball team called the Honey Drippers. And on opening day in 1954, Morgan showed off her athleticism by ranging far to the right to start a highlight reel double play against the Birmingham Black Barons. The only pitcher of this historic group of women ball players was Mamie Peanut Johnson. Standing five foot three inches with a strong right arm, Johnson had a 33 and eight win loss record from 1953 to 1955 with the Indianapolis Clowns. The legend has it that she earned her nickname in one of her first Negro League games. The hitter yelled out to her, you ain't no bigger than a peanut. She promptly struck him out and the nickname stuck. Now, Johnson wanted to try out for the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, which emerged during World War II and was famously depicted in the movie A League of Their Own. But she was denied the chance because of the color of her skin. Johnson was certainly disappointed by this cruel, senseless rejection, but she persisted, pitching with more fire and focus than ever. And as fate would have it, an even more meaningful opportunity opened up for her competing with and against the men in the Negro Leagues and becoming a legend in the process. And I absolutely love this beautiful photograph of barrier breaker Jackie Robinson with the legendary Connie Morgan. Now, I'm not sure who's giving the batting tips here, but what I do know is that Jackie had great respect for Connie Morgan and her ability to play this game. And it strikes me that a league born out of segregation would become the driving force for social change. You see, they didn't care what color you were, and they didn't care what gender you were. Can you play? Do you have something to offer? After all, that's the way it is supposed to be. And that is why I say that the Negro Leagues embodies the American spirit unlike any story in the annals of American history.